Hello, everybody, and hello, Jason. Welcome to the Digital uh, Marketers in Paradise podcast. I'm very, very, very excited to have you on today. Uh, took a little while to get everything set up, but uh, yeah, we have yeah, it all. It yeah, yeah, a little bit. Yeah, well, I'm glad to be here, man. Thanks for inviting me. Thank you. We have your expertise on the show. Mm -hmm. I know that you've been working uh, closely, uh, very closely related with Bitcoin in the last, I don't know, uh, six months at least, right, mm -hmm. to a yeah, year. Yeah, I have. Yeah. yeah. So you have some hands-on experience, and mm -hmm. you also talk to people on a daily basis yeah, in, yeah, in relation yeah. to it. So you have a lot of like hands-on experience. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, but, but before we get into that, I mean, this is your inaugural episode, man. Let's get a little bit, let's get to know right. a little bit about you, man. I appreciate it. So yeah. let's introduce myself a little bit, and then we'll introduce you, mm -hmm. and then we'll get mm -hmm. into that thing. Yeah. So... Um, my, my name's Ryan, obviously, as everyone knows already, and, and they'll be listening to a little bit of a preemptive recording about this as well that goes into a little bit more uh, detailed description. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. So as far as the basic details, um, I worked nine to five job. You know, I grew up and I didn't know there was another option, <laughs> which, <laughs> as most as people most do. most of us do. <laughs> yeah, right? absolutely. Right, right. Yeah. You live your life and uh, you you do what everyone tells you to do. Mm -hmm. You know, I never really was interested in school mm -hmm. uh, from the beginning. Mm -hmm. I like to hang out with friends and mm -hmm. I spent my uh, maybe 50% of my senior year of high school, I didn't attend. Oh, Wow. Yeah, how'd right. You, how'd you graduate, man? Right. So <laughs> I, I have probably the uh, the saint of a mother oh, <laughs> who, who came to the okay. school after that and, and said, uh, let my child pass this grade. He's... <laughs> so my, uh, my teacher and my guidance counselor just said, just make up the work. Mm -hmm. Just do the work and you'll we'll pass you. So, so you I, had to do like what a semester's worth of work? Uh, practically, yeah, pretty much. Oh yeah, yeah, pretty much. Jeez. Just a stack of papers. I just went through them and, and, and it was That's insane, you know, man. Yeah, yeah. I can't believe that. So I did all that and my guidance counselor was like, Oh, this person's not going to college, obviously. <laughs> like they they didn't even come to high school, they're not going to college. Community <laughs> college might be best for him, man. Thirteenth grade. Yeah. Let's get a, right? <laughs> or, <laughs> or vocational school. Vocation. <laughs> Let's learn a trade. Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you ever you ever thought about being a carpenter? Yeah, you know, carpenter's real <laughs> big these days man. Your son, you can make it big that's right that's yeah. right so she pulled me aside and she said um guy uh, you know a big insurance company there they they can offer you know looking for, to hire from the school so i went there and got the job and i was an insurance agent at like 18 whoa 19 yeah. really yeah yeah so i was licensed licensed i could do insurance yeah buying selling in all yeah. the states for those people who are listening i've known ryan for a pretty long time yeah, yeah. this is all this stuff i'm hearing for the first time well uh welcome to the party yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's right yeah yeah, yeah. so I, I did that uh yeah brand new info I, I did that for a while and uh after three years, I was just a number, you know, six three one three one nine, boom. Mm -hmm. And if you're one minute late, you get like docked, and I just ah, just it was too much. Yeah, yeah, I just couldn't man. handle it. Mm -hmm. I couldn't handle it. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just, uh, I just, I even moved close to there for a less of a commute. I tried a lot of things, and I just couldn't adapt to the nine to five lifestyle. Mm -hmm. And I, I started following a guy called Eben Pagan. Okay. Are you familiar with Evan Pagan? No, he no. He did a book called Double Your Dating, which uh, is like a like, kind of dating niche like type. <laughs> pick up, like pickup artists, like Pua. Like, that's uh, right. That's uh, right. Yeah. So he introduced me to the world of internet marketing. Mm -hmm. So I was like, oh, wow, this is, uh, wow. Like, you can not have a job? Like, you can not, <laughs> you can, that's possible? Like, you can do that? I was like, oh, I'm in. Like, what do I sign up? What do I do? Yeah, what do I do? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so I remember distinctly, like, I, I came home from my insurance job and I put my keys on the kind of table mm -hmm. you know in the kind of where I lived and I said you know what I'm not doing this anymore mm -hmm. I'm not gonna do it anymore and I, I just started, I watched I just just consumed massive amounts of of marketing materials from these top people yeah I just spent all day in my room just watching 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 and I quit my job. Nice. I quit the job. Well, uh, you you think nice, like well, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. But you're, I, I, you're I, on your way, man. You're like going straight to the top. I was, I was, I went to my my manager, not my direct supervisor, the one above. Mm -hmm. And I went, uh, here's my. I drew a line. I said, here's my opportunity at this company. Mm -hmm. and I drew a line, mm -hmm. and I said, here's my opportunity as an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. And I drew a line straight up. Mm -hmm. I said, there's no limit. <laughs> and she's like. Okay, <laughs> I like the sh uh, I like that showmanship, man. That's from um, what was it? Uh, 
how to like make friends and influence people. I think is that, that from that? I think that's one of the principles in that book. I read yeah. that book like a year later, and yeah. I read that book actually once a year these days. Yeah, yeah, it's mm. it, yeah. He talks about showmanship, how you don't that's just right. like you know just just like use words, but actually like try to use theatrical stuff. That's right. That's yeah. right. Is that in, I think in that book for most people, I think listening to this podcast, it's, mm. it's pretty much standard reading. Yeah, I mean, how to win mm-hmm. friends and influence people, Dale Carnegie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah mm-hmm. I, I think that that point you're talking about is in reference to the uh th- there's a, a foreman writing the number of products that were done that overnight yeah yeah for the next day's shift yeah and they would they, they did six and the next day they would write seven and they would yeah. always want to do one up <laughs> yeah yeah that was the showmanship yeah i remember that i read that book once a year these days really yeah yeah wow. just to follow up because okay. you you know it, your fundamentals right if mm-hmm. you lose track of the kind of the basics and mm-hmm. you kind of can get off course so mm-hmm. just once a year refresh just skim through it and right, some cool of the points. cool so yeah. you were saying uh, after geico and oh yeah digital I, just, marketing? I quit i quit my job i quit the job, quit the job. Mm-hmm. and then i lost all my money and got evicted and got my car <laughs> repossessed <laughs> really <laughs> yeah. oh man lost everything lost everything wow i had a 401k i cashed it out mm-hmm. cashed out i had maybe six grand but i'm like 19 years old 20 years old so yeah. it's six grand your that's 401k. a lot yeah. People listen are like, what the? What is this guy doing, right? <laughs> but I, I, I just did, at that point I didn't realize you have to set up a second income mm-hmm. before you quit your first income. Mm-hmm. I didn't. I was too young. Yeah, I was caught up yeah. in the uh, you know. All like the you know just like uh, breakneck speed. It's just yeah, like, yeah, you know, sky's yeah. the limit. That's yeah. right, and you mm-hmm. just you're full of optimism, but mm-hmm. uh, but not full of skill, mm-hmm. <laughs> right? Mm-hmm. And then no like discipline. I know whatever. Mm-hmm. So I. Uh, so I went to get a sales job, okay. 100% commission, door-to-door sales, management training program. Mm. All right. So I did business-to-business sales, 100% commission, no vacation, no holiday for three years. Ooh, that's pretty rough. Business-to-business. Yeah. I was just talking yeah. from 7 a.m. till 7 p.m. all day, every day, mm-hmm. sales manager style, just mm-hmm. doing it. Mm-hmm. You know, telecom. I was yeah. in that industry. But Te- it was, you know, right. Well, yeah. I, mean, it sound, I mean, you're doing it for that long. It sounds like you got pretty good at it. Damn good at it, nice. but I lost interest. Uh, you yeah. know, I lost interest, and I fell back in love with entrepreneurship. I wanted to learn sales mm. skills, which I learned. That's right? cool. Yeah, All absolutely. Right. And at least you got that experience beforehand, and you're just grinding yourself out. So, and then, oh yeah, of yeah. Course. And you, get, you get burned out. I can imagine. I imagine. I, I like some career like that, man. Like oof. it's insane. I mean, mm. it's insane. You wake up. I was waking up at 5.30 a.m. Mm. every morning. I mean, this is not like, uh, you know, I miss one day a month. Type. This is like no vacation, no holiday. You're there because you're building a team of people. Like, you miss one day, you're, you're fucked. Yeah, it's a big deal. Yeah, it's a big yeah. deal mm-hmm. because you you miss a day. Mm-hmm. Guess what happens? The next time someone on your team misses a day, mm-hmm. you know, because okay. you're a team leader, right? Oh, so, okay. So you're a manager. So I had a team of like 14 guys that yeah. I, I recruited, trained, overseed personally. Yeah. And you have to lead by example. That's right. That's yeah. right. So you gain a lot of experience, mm-hmm. a lot of experience, but you don't necessarily, I didn't gain a lot of, of the, the, the moolah. <laughs> the moolah. The moolah. <laughs> that right? cheddar. Yeah. 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 I, didn't, I didn't have a lot of that, but I had a lot of, <laughs> I had a lot of ability, you know? Yeah. So I could talk for 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. With, with anybody, you know? Yeah. I had people my car that I met that day that I'd be best friends with by the end of the night. Yeah. You know? Because you spend so much time with them. Yeah. I'm mm-hmm. sure, like, when you got hired, they're saying, we're probably not going to make a, uh, make that much money, but the experience. Well, yeah. not only that is the opportunity. Yeah, that's the true. Because you're, you're opening up doors, you're making connections, like, that's you're right. meeting new people. And that's then, right. And then, right. also, you just know how the process works. That's right. And, and, and along with that, the individuals who were able to manage a team mm-hmm. and recruit and train and do all these different skill sets, mm-hmm. they were able to open up their own location and handle a Fortune 50 client. Mm-hmm. So, you know, major U.S. corporations like Verizon, AT&T, you know, Comcast, gotcha. telecom companies, and even some direct TV, some non-telecom. Okay. I think we can mention those. I'm not, I'm not affiliated with any of them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so they, they, they would have that opportunity, though, right? Mm-hmm. So they, and then if you open up your own office, you're making six figures, you know, your mm-hmm. first year. Mm-hmm. You know, so I was caught in this idea of, like, people work the nine to five grind their whole lives mm-hmm. they live 40 mm-hmm. years 50 years and i think it's kind of cliche at this point that people talk about this you know mm-hmm. and people know they're they, they are aware of the vast amount of opportunity mm-hmm. people know well uh, it depends on the industry i would mm-hmm. say i would definitely say mm-hmm. um so mm-hmm. like i mean there's like obviously there's very successful people in the retail mm-hmm. industry the, mm-hmm. uh, the, the service industry mm-hmm. um like definitely like with tech or like marketing mm-hmm. like that can definitely um I guess th- it's a lot easier to move away from the nine to five and mm. go into those and like entrepreneurship. That's right. Like where you're just like, you're able to just like set your own flexible working hours. Mm. Um, 
But like, I mean, for other stuff, like for example, like you know, if you're in the mm. restaurant industry, mm -hmm. like you can't be doing. I mean, you can't That's just right. be like That's doing right. entrepreneurial hours. That's right, right. Yeah. The, the, but a lot of the skills are transferable. No, oh, absolutely. I you definitely know, you, agree with you that. You learn like the customer service mm -hmm. in, uh, in in the restaurant business. Mm -hmm. and sort of thing. I was a, I was a waiter, and I've mm -hmm. I've served for mm -hmm. maybe a year, year and a half. Mm -hmm. I served at like mm -hmm. different restaurants. Mm -hmm. and, and you, you get the burnt hands and all, the, <laughs> all the different things yeah. that come along with that. Yeah. But I, I didn't. Uh, but the skills are transferable. But the, the key thing that I learned, and mm -hmm. if there's one takeaway, is have a second income mm -hmm. before you get rid of your first, first income. income. That's the key, man. That mm -hmm. that, that made all the difference because mm -hmm. I was never stressed. Yeah, i was never stressed, true. and yeah. I do things I don't want to do. Right, like I go to the I go to the office and I work, mm -hmm. but I'm not freaking out about. You know, getting a pizza. Yeah. You know, not forget about like how am I going to pay for the next day? That's right. That's yeah. right. So your personal expenses are fully paid for, which opens up the creativeness mm -hmm. for you to create something and yeah. produce something and provide value to others. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Kind of like Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Mm -hmm. You're familiar with that? I mean, most people kind of you have to have your basic needs met yeah. before you can move on to higher levels like yeah. you know, food, shelter, blah blah blah. Yeah. And if that second income can also be a passive income. Well, then it's, it's possible. Yeah. It's possible, but it. Uh, it my personal experience, it takes time to develop. Yeah. It takes time because you have to, you know, you have to create it yourself and then mm. you can outsource it to others. I feel like for mm. people who are trying, are trying to achieve passive incomes, mm -mm. like that time was like maybe like t five, ten years ago. Mm. Then nowadays, it's mm. so much harder to create an idea that mm. will generate a passive income. I think that's right. There's a lot of internet based companies. Yeah. Right. There's a lot of mm. e commerce. Mm hmm. And they all have their own specific niche, mm -hmm. right? And then you work within that niche mm -hmm. and those guidelines. Mm -hmm. But as far as the opportunity to grow and expand and make it a passive income, mm -hmm. the possibility is there. The opportunity is there, mm -hmm. right? It just depends on – there's really two things. You've heard the phrase, you know, money makes money. Oh, right? yeah. So okay. you have some money. It's easy to make money. Yeah. It's easier. You need capital. Right? You need capital, right? Yeah. Or you have to get a loan, but the yeah. loans is a high risk. Yeah. Your own money, it's a little bit, uh, you and know, you have some you extra. you got to put up your house, your car, like, That's right. maybe your children. Yeah. <laughs> I'll give up my firstborn son <laughs> in exchange for passive income in order to spend more time with my family in whom I just gave up. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> really, though, what I want to get down to is – the opportunity that we have in front of us with cryptocurrency. Okay. Right? Mm -hmm. So you're, I would say you're an expert in this field because you deal with people. Well, I try. You, you know, yeah, you I deal try. with people yeah. on a daily basis. They, yeah. they come in, you're mm -hmm. there, they mm -hmm. have questions, mm -hmm. you answer the questions. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. So this wasn't planned, this particular question I'm going to have for you, but can you go into maybe some of the more common questions, maybe top one or two or, or three questions, whatever you want, uh, that people ask when they come in. So yeah, I'll come. I'll go into the, some of the most uh, the the common questions. Mm -hmm. They're not necessarily like some of them might be good questions, but then some of them might be just bad questions um, sure. in terms of um, I guess kind of like the uh, the more negative traits that cryptocurrency has gotten, especially within the mainstream media. And so, like for example, one of the common questions is basically, how do I make money off of mm -hmm. cryptocurrency? And that question. Uh, for me and my coworkers, we hate that question. Sure. We really hate that question because for cryptocurrency, yeah, there is a pos there is a possibility to make a, like a pretty sizable amount. Uh, sure. You get a pretty sizable return on your investment. But uh, cryptocurrency, people who are really into it, it's a, it's about technology first. Sure. So the technology, blockchain, blockchain technology, yeah, sure. like that's an underlying technology that could be possibly be a huge disruptor in so many different industries all over the world. We're talking sure. about maybe utility, supply management. Um, we're talking about especially finance. Finance probably the first one. Mm -hmm. But uh, when people who are getting into it, they're – Getting in, uh, a lot of people are just getting into it because they they heard so and so made you know fifty thousand dollars in in a week sure. or so and so made you know f ten million dollars in a couple of months crypto millionaire exactly yeah, yeah. Right. and the buying Lambos and yeah, shit yeah, like sure. so we get a couple of people that come in uh, well actually not just a couple of people but a, a lot of people who come in just like how do I make money mm. and we're just like. Well, first, you should probably learn about what you're putting your money into. That's right. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Warren Buffett says, right, never mm -hmm. buy a stock unless you know about the company. You have to yeah. learn about what you're doing, technology behind it, and how yeah. it works yeah. before you invest even a penny. Yeah. It's yeah. like one of the most basic principles. Sure, but like, guys, they like, they'll buy like – because now there's like thousands and thousands of cryptocurrencies. Mm. They'll just buy one because they see – 
like it, it had like a small, it had like a you know maybe a small pump the day before, and they're just sure. thinking, all right, well I'm gonna buy it. Sure. What, what is it? <laughs> like what is well, it? Like what do you mind? I, I want uh, one thousand Dodge coin, please. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Three hundred uh, Tit coin and, and Pot coin. Please. Yeah. <laughs> what is it used for exactly? <laughs> Don't worry about it. Actually, Doge coin. That was actually the very first when I first got got into this industry. Mm. That was the very first altcoin that I bought. Really? Yeah. How, how do, you, do you buy it directly with with, with a car? I mean, how can you buy it directly? You have to buy Bitcoin and exchange it. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, as far as I know, I don't think any exchanges have a Doge to a fiat currency pair. So, uh, um, yeah, I had to buy it. I mm. first turned my fiat currency into Bitcoin, and then mm. Bitcoin into Dogecoin. And I think wow. I bought like maybe like five hundred. Did you, but, you use like Coinbase or something like that? Usually? I I use actually uh, a bunch of different uh, exchanges. Yeah. So mm. yeah, I use ones like from the states, ones in Korea, mm. um, ones in Europe as well. Um, like I think the, uh, uh, the biggest one, Binance, right now. Bi- but Binance has no uh, – you can't buy directly. You can change on Binance, but you can't uh, purchase. Yeah. There's USDT, but there's no USDT. Yeah, you can do USDT, but um, other than that, you can use Bitcoin, Ethereum, or their own uh, their own coin, uh, Binance, uh, Binance coin, which is BNB. Can you buy that directly on the site? Mm-hmm. With, with cash? Oh, uh, not with cash. No, no with no. other coin, with Bitcoin, you could buy it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Binance is strictly an altcoin. That's they don't right. have any fiat currency pairs. Yeah. So, just as a, a testament, you know, and for those who aren't really don't know, fiat is just you know your your normal currency, dollars, mm, dollars, pesos, yen, whatever, yeah. yen, mm-hmm. you know, won, whatever, mm-hmm. or euro, whatever, mm. country based currencies. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then crypto is going to be your online currency, right? Mm-hmm. Bitcoin or other alternate currencies. Mm. But just as a testament to the opportunity that exists within this arena, within this field, I read an article last week that Binance. So first of all, it's been open for a year. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. 2017, it opened. Yeah, that's right. 2017, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, and the guy's name is CZ. Yeah, that's the guy's mm-hmm. that, you know. Mm-hmm. And uh, I read an article, and we can fact check this later, but mm-hmm. from what I read. Binance had more of a profit than Deutsche Bank in yeah. its first year. I saw that. I saw that on Instagram. Actually, someone had uh, oh. like made a meme out of it. That's right. And yeah, I I, um, uh, I need to fact check that as well. But I mean, if that's true, which I could really believe, I actually, could as well, yeah. yeah, like I mean, that's insane. That's just another. That's just further evidence showing that cryptocurrency mm. is going to be disrupting one of the, you know, one of the richest industries in in global history which that's has right. always been finance banking that's whatever. right that's so right. yeah it's definitely it's definitely here to stay that's like, right b- specific coins like they might um uh like they might come and go but mm. cryptocurrency and blockchain is definitely here to stay which will actually leads me into my next like sure. common question sure, sure, sure. was that you know which coin should i buy and that uh, one that one too I, I really fucking hate man well you can only buy one right I mean you can yeah. only buy bitcoin where else can you really change fiat for uh, another currency you'd be surprised actually a lot um, so the American exchanges the American based exchanges like Coinbase um, they're a little bit That's slow right. but Ethereum, they're yeah. yeah but they're now actually starting to add a lot more different uh, a lot more different pairs so mm-hmm. you got you know, right. uh, USD to, uh, to bitcoin you got Ethereum to bitcoin I mean to Ethereum Ah, USD to Ethereum. That's what mm-hmm. I'm gonna say. Mm-hmm. Um, I think also uh, there's Litecoin um, either on Coinbase or maybe Gemini. Uh, Coinbase actually uh, actually has a good amount. Um, and then mm-hmm. uh, this new one, this new exchange. It started out as just like kind of like a an investing app for What's millennials. It? It's called Robinhood. Oh, I'm familiar. Yeah. Robinhood or Robinhood? Robin Robinhood. Hood. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And there's a zero transaction fee. So that's what I've heard. I yeah. I signed up for it, but my state's Virginia, so it hasn't opened up in Virginia. But mm. like every single week, they're opening up in new states. Are they really? Yeah. And so I've heard that I haven't tried it yet, but yeah, I heard that there's zero trading fees. Which mm. I'm wondering how. Like, well, I don't know. The thing is, I don't know if that's going to be permanent. How do they generate revenue? If, yeah. If there's no. They have some other some other technique. But th- my, my feeling is. So here's here's another thing that I want to get into that I think is valuable, mm-hmm. right? I think the majority of ways people trade is is too difficult, and I think it's too risky. Mm-hmm. And, and and we haven't really talked, we haven't spoken about this before. And my my feeling, but buying and holding mm-hmm. and selling, you know, or buying and and waiting for time to determine mm-hmm. your profit, mm-hmm. I feel like it's risky to me because you don't know the market. True. 
Um, so, like, it kind of goes back to, like, you have to know what you're buying. Mm. So, for example, I have a couple of coins that I've bought, and mm. I was planning on holding for a very long time because, mm. f- uh, according to the fundamental analysis that I looked into, mm. the, their technology is sound. Um, they're creating a solution to a problem that has always existed. Mm -hmm. And uh, more and more companies are getting interested in either them directly, that Mm -hmm. coin directly, Mm -hmm. or in the general field that they're trying to work in. That's right. And and sometimes there's huge jumps. I mean, sometimes Mm -hmm. coins go from like 10 cents to over a dollar. Yeah. You invest $5,000 in that. I mean, Mm -hmm. you're banking out. And that's where you have these crypto millionaires. Yeah, yeah. They're making those big bucks from an ICO yeah. or, or something, mm-hmm. an independent coin offering, right? Someone opens up a new coin, they take funding, mm-hmm. and then the coin has some application, which is practical, people mm-hmm. like it, mm-hmm. and it gets used, mm-hmm. and then the coin price, the valuation just goes super high. Yeah. yeah. So, like, one thing I should uh, definitely say is that, like, right now, the cryptocurrency industry is almost completely unregulated right now. Governments That's all right. over the governments all over the world are like, trying to figure out how to put regulation on this, you know, how to protect investors, how to you know, mm. how to actually uh, tax it as well because right. I mean it is an investment. Mm. But I mean as of right now it is the wild west. Mm. And so that's that's part of the reason why you just have these insane like pumps of like a coin mm. going up maybe like 300% mm. in one day. That's right. That happened very recently. Um uh, it was a coin called Bitcoin. It was a B Y T E. Yeah, B Y T E. I believe the ticker was B C N. I believe. Mm. Uh, so that happened recently, and the coin all of a sudden it was just shooting up like crazy on one exchange, mm. and then um, and then uh, and then another exchange it started following on that like, other exchange as well, and then eventually the uh, the exchanges they actually suspended all. <sighs> All trading, yeah, all trading uh, deposits withdrawals for that particular coin because they were thinking, oh, it's, this is going to be it's major price manipulation, and that's an issue, and, and that's one of my concerns, and I think that's a practical concern, a reasonable mm-hmm. concern from a daily trader mm-hmm. is, hey, am, where how do I get my money? Right, how yeah. do I get my money? Right, yeah. I made quote unquote. Mm-hmm. Uh, a one thousand percent profit on my investment, mm-hmm. according to this uh, website. Mm-hmm. I want my money. Yeah. <laughs> right? I want to cash out. Yeah. And then the exchanges, because there are no regulations, mm-hmm. sometimes they go, "Ah, oh, well, submit some more KYC. You know your customer yeah. documentation. Yeah. Your account is only verified to level one, level yeah. two, level three. Mm-hmm. We need a higher limits for mm-hmm. higher verification." Mm-hmm. And sometimes people get into I'll, I'll give you a, a situation. Mm. This is a great condition, and you know I'm not I'm not going against the company here, but it's my personal experience. I want to share it, and I'm still dealing with them. So mm. this is an ongoing issue mm. that's just nearing its close. Mm. Uh, local Bitcoin, okay, right? Local right. Bitcoin. So a very common place to buy and sell Bitcoin. Mm. You can, you know, I'm, I'm a seller on there, so I sell it. Right? Okay, so I sell it. So I buy it, you know, and then I resell it, and there's a percentage increase, and I yeah. get the increase as a profit. It's a natural business. Yeah. So. Somebody, one of my first trades, I've probably done over, not a lot, maybe 50 trades, 30, 50 trades, somewhere in that range, multiple tens. Mm -hmm. And someone flagged me as high risk, my second trade. Oh, really? You know, in some weird issue. There was no, actually, they they messaged that I hadn't sent the escrow, I hadn't released the the Bitcoin to them after they made the payment, Uh. but they had never made the payment. Oh. So it was like a ridiculous thing. It never happened. It was no way. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. They just put a button. Yeah, yeah. So I, I messaged tech support. Hey, can you remove this flag? There's no issue here. You know, can you fix my, my problem with my account? So they, they said, in order to review your ticket, you have to like log in this other site. And their process was so complicated. Oh, yeah. I emailed them like four times. It wasn't working. Mm-hmm. Blah, blah, blah. Anyway, I keep trading or keep mm-hmm. selling. Mm-hmm. A month and a half later, they cancel my account. Not cancel. Uh, they suspend my account and uh, steal all my Bitcoin. Really? And it's yeah. And mm. they said because of this thing. Yeah. He's like, you never respond. I was like, I look at the the notes. I responded a thousand times to yeah. try to get it solved. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And uh, they never did it. So they yeah. so, uh, so I had to like submit all this KYC. Mm. Know your customer. Uh, for you no, don't know, KYC is like your driver's license, passport. Mm-hmm. Know your customer. Mm-hmm. Basic stuff that you would use if you apply for a bank account. Yeah. Similar. Mm-hmm. They want to know who you are. So I, su- I put all this data in, and I had to wait seven days mm-hmm. for a first response from a support ticket. Yeah. And then maybe four days. Anyway, it's going on a month, mm-hmm. and it's it was a non-issue. 
<laughs> and they couldn't just fix it. You know what I'm saying? St- yeah. uh, finally, it's just reaching the end of it now. Oh, now? Now, after yeah. a month. Okay. So I, I just I think this just shows another step about how valuable Bitcoin is yeah. that even the exchanges can't keep up with the demand. So yeah, that was a that was a huge problem actually earlier this year. Mm. Luckily, well, I mean, I guess kind of luckily, it's gotten a lot uh, more efficient and a lot quicker. Mm. But that's simply because there's actually uh, because the price is so low, there's less demand. Sure, um, that's right. Especially in Korea right now. Mm. Um, in Korea, uh, the cryptocurrency you know, the craze uh, happened at the same time all over the world. It was like late last year. Mm. Um, Right now in Korea, right now in Korea, it's actually still pretty high compared with the rest of the world. It is. Yeah. It's still about a 5% margin. Yeah. About 5 mm-hmm. to 7 to 8%. I mean, Coin One mm-hmm. is usually the highest. Because mm-hmm. I have a lot of experience. We spoke earlier mm-hmm. about the arbitrage opportunities. Yeah. And, and some yeah. people took advantage. Yeah. And, and, and a side note, just, oh my, if you catch the market at the right time, and mm-hmm. I want to go back to this in, in, in this kind of I- investor strategy yeah. versus arbitrage yeah right trading versus arbitrage and that's what i want to get across right i think that arbitrage is, is, is a much more risk-free way of trading uh yeah it is risk-free but uh from uh, like in my experience and then also from people who i've talked to yes setting it up to create it to make a like consistent uh, consistent returns that's right that's very difficult it takes more effort. Yeah. But once you get it and the condition's right, yeah. it's like riding a roller coaster. Yeah, that's, I mean, easier. Just, yeah, that's easier said than yeah. done, man. Like, you can't just <laughs> – well, you make talk, it sound so easy. I'll talk about – I think it is because mm-hmm. really I, I know I know a guy and I can talk from my – I'll tell this guy's story and I'll tell mm-hmm. my personal story, a little bit about my personal story as well. Okay. Is that he saw this opportunity. Mm-hmm. This, is, this is outrageous. He did it. Right. There's regulations in place. He was able to overcome those regulations mm-hmm. with some mm-hmm. other tactics and mm-hmm. techniques, mm-hmm. which, you know, as far as I know, are legitimate at that time. OK. And he I think he profited over a hundred grand. Not bad. Right. Not over a hundred. Right. OK. Well, good as a hand, man. In, in maybe a month. And what he did. But here's the crazy part. So he went to he had all this cash. He didn't know what to do with it. You know, he, he took it to Hong Kong. <laughs> and, 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 and what he told me is when he went through customs, mm-hmm. he he had a hundred grand in his, in his cash, yeah, cash, yeah, yeah. And he he claimed fifty percent of it. He claimed half of it, right? So yeah. this part's obviously not. I mean, yeah. you can't do that. Yeah. But he did that, and so he took it to Hong Kong and deposited it in a bank. So now it's safe, right? Oh. Uh, because okay. then the issue, then the issue that we get into, which I also want to go into a little bit, is when you make these massive profits, mm-hmm. if you do, mm-hmm. taxes. Yes. That's the natural question, right? Exactly. Well, how do you deal with that? Taxes. And, and so yeah. what I'd recommend is I think we can, just, we can agree on one blanket statement, do your research, and yes. pay it if it's there. Yes, and, absolutely. You know, if, if, if there's yeah. an opportunity, we talked about the government's yeah. regulating. Yeah. Do your research, pay if it's there, do not try to hide it. Don't hide it. Yes. That's right. Be upfront. Uh, listen, you already made so much money, like – it's taxes, all right? That's right. That's right. It's natural. <laughs> yeah. That's right. That's right. It's better to lose a, lot, a little money now instead of a lot of money later on by, you know, getting audited, having to pay lo- like tax lawyers to defend yourself and also possibly avoiding criminal prosecution. That's right. That's yeah. right. It's a huge it's a huge thing. Yeah. And, and and just for cuz, you know, the big thing was and let's go into explaining what arbitrage is. Mm-hmm. And then Let's just go into that, and we'll see where it goes from there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. So th- the the big thing with the arbitrage is buying in one market and selling in another. Yeah. Which is common in business, right? You do that. You buy from a wholesaler. You sell it to the the consumer, right? That, that's I mean, that's what investment banks they have right. like divisions to completely devoted to that. That's right. So mm-hmm. it's a common business practice, right? Mm-hmm. And it actually helps the market because it closes the gaps, mm-hmm. right? That's how it benefits the market because it takes the highs and the lows and it it margins them out mm-hmm. to be more even, mm-hmm. right? So some sporadically if you watch the market there are opportunities where one uh market and i'm talking world market so yeah. you have korea and america for example mm-hmm. or you have um anywhere any europe mm-hmm. uh, country in europe poland poland mm-hmm. for example mm-hmm. and korea or whatever yeah. you know and you you buy in one and you sell in another yeah and you take that money you send it over you buy there again and and and, and rinse and repeat yeah right? yeah so i mean people with that in mind, so people are aware, in December, 
in January of mm-hmm. this last year and this year, it was thirty percent in Korea for crypto. For crypto, yeah, yeah, yeah. for mm-hmm. Bitcoin, yeah, for. Um, it was most famously known as the kimchi premium. The kimchi premium, that's yeah, right. Exactly. That's, and yeah. a lot of people profited mm-hmm. heavily mm-hmm. off of that. Yeah. I mean, a lot of people, right? Yeah. A lot of people, they really, I mean, and, and it came to the point where, as far as I know, in my group of friends, the issue wasn't how much, it, it was just, I need more. Yeah. <laughs> it was just, I can't buy anymore overseas. I'm hooked, man. I'm hooked. <laughs> right. I'll get my fix. Yeah, I mean, I know in some cases there's individuals who made over over six grand, mm-hmm. six million uh, in Korean won at that time yeah. in, in hours. Yeah. In hour, I mean, literally two hours. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's just buy, sell, buy, sell, buy, sell. And the mm-hmm. next thing you know, it just, it's, it's, it just becomes ridiculous. Yeah. yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, I think that we... we Touched base on some of the big points yeah. that I wanted to cover, mm-hmm. and, and before we kind of get into the closing here and we wrap it up a little bit, I want to get into uh, just kind of your personal feelings about the future of, of Bitcoin mm-hmm. and, more importantly, the blockchain technology, and, and mm-hmm. where do you see it leading? Okay. C- kind of being on the on the on the, the cutting edge or, or being on the front line. You mm-hmm. are, you know. Ooh. So yeah. so <laughs> those, are, those are big topics, man. I don't know if I can do that in closing, man. No, we. I think we. Need to, I think we'll have to do a part two, man. Oh God, maybe. Yeah, yeah okay. we can. We can. We All can. right. Okay. All right. Well, here. Uh, how about we just take a little break? And we'll. I'll get. And then the second part, I'll just get right into all that. Oh, that's good. So I let's can, take a little bit of break. If I can At, remember all those questions that you just told me. The key point. The key point is the future. The future implementation okay. of blockchain technology and also Bitcoin in fintech. Right? Okay, right, all that right. sort of thing. So let's take a, a break and then we'll get back to you in a few minutes. Okay. And we're back. So Jason is going to explain about fintech properties related to Bitcoin, mm. as well as the blockchain technology. And also, it's an opportunity for him to input anything he wants. So this okay. is kind of your, your opportunity. Yeah, okay. Ahead. So yeah, one thing about cryptocurrency is that it's definitely important to learn about the technology. And the main mm-hmm. technology, like you just mentioned, is blockchain. For those of you who don't know what blockchain is, uh, basically imagine a chain, uh, literally a chain that is connected with uh, – that, that are blocks connected together like a chain. Mm. So – what blockchain does is basically you have uh, – they're called miners all mm. over the world. And these miners are kind of uh, the kind of janitors, you could kind of say, for the blockchain. And the blockchain, each block holds some type of information. Mm. And so for Bitcoin, the blockchain holds the um, – I guess like the the numerical values of bitcoins all over the world, and also for the transactions that have happened mm. were using Bitcoin. Sure. And so one of the great things about blockchain is that it is a um, it it focuses on the aspect of decentralization. So mm. no one single authority manages and maintains the blockchain. Mm. The miners who I just mentioned, they are the ones who are managing and maintaining it, but they have to confirm all together uh, the I guess the correct information of the block mm-hmm. in order for it to actually be recorded. Sure. And so, because of that, the uh, it makes it super secure. And then also another aspect of that security is that for each block, um, it, uh, the block also holds information of mm-hmm. all the previous blocks behind it. Mm-hmm. So right. if you want to maybe change a transaction in the past, well, then you would have to hack that block and also. It's impossible, and, and also like yeah. oh, like five hundred thousand blocks before it. The computing power isn't there. Yeah, just yeah. not there. Mm-hmm. Just not there. So it's it's it would uh, you'd probably be losing all your money before you know you actually be able to hack that block. Sure, sure, mm-hmm. sure. Which makes it very extremely secure in mm-hmm. that sense. In yeah. that sense, as far as the transactions. Now, yeah. when it get, when it becomes insecure, mm. is where you know you have what the ransom. The ransom uh, spyware, yeah. you have these things going on now, yeah. and you have some other things. And Well, I mean, for that, they could have, they could have easily – hackers who do that, they could have easily done it with like, you know, you had to pay with like a Visa or a MasterCard. The only problem about that is that um, that's traceable. So right. I guess one thing about blockchain and Bitcoin is um, – well, I shouldn't say Bitcoin because – um, Bitcoin. Th- one of the biggest uh, fallacies about Bitcoin is people think, oh, you know, it's a untraceable currency. That's completely wrong. It's not true. It's yeah. Just not true. Yeah, yeah. like uh, any government that has any type of legitimate cyber, uh, like uh, cyber criminal investigations unit, they can easily track it. Yeah. 
And, and I, not only that, I think that even the exchanges, mm. the exchanges, I mean, as, as soon as you write it, if, to buy it, mm-hmm. right? If you're going to buy it. Now, if you're not getting it from some illegal way, right, which I don't even know of, to be mm-hmm. honest with you, but I know that the only way – right now I wanted to go buy – I want Bitcoin, right? I have to go buy it somewhere. Yeah. Right? I, you know, just like anything else, mm-hmm. any commodity. Mm-hmm. So I, I go there and I buy it. I have to submit documentation yeah. nine times out of ten mm-hmm. about – Myself in order to purchase it on mm-hmm. any reputable exchange yeah. or any other uh, kind of like Coin Mama comes to mind. Yeah, Are you familiar with Coin Mama? Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. It's not an exchange, but it's a, it's a storefront. So yeah. yeah, exactly. For these exchanges, uh, before it was a l- like it was pretty lax. Actually, you could just sign up and you're good to go. You mm-hmm. start trading, depositing Bitcoin, start trading immediately. Now. Um, for the benefit of the industry, actually, they're they are tightening down a lot on KYC protocols. Sure. So, like you know, for example, you mentioned you got to send in your passport. You got to mm. send in, um, like uh, sometimes you, you send in like a picture of you holding your passport. That's right. right next yeah, to your with head. with the yeah. date written on yeah, it. Yeah, with the date sure. written on it, stuff mm-hmm. like that. Uh, like you'll have to for American exchanges, you got to put in your social security number. That's right. That's right. Um, like I had to do that. I like kind of what you went through lo- with local bitcoins. Mm. I kind of went through the same process with. Uh, Coinbase. Yeah, it's just like all of a sudden they just sus- suspended my account. I was just like, "What's going on?" And that's they're... that's the big issue, I think. Yeah. Is is there's so much volume and the exchanges can't really handle the volume, mm-hmm. so sometimes they take unnecessary measures. Yeah, and they don't really listen to you. That's been my yeah. experience. Is yeah. they, they, the customer support isn't that fantastic? Yeah, it's pretty hit or miss. Um, I yeah. can say for uh, in my experience that. There are some exchanges that have awesome, awesome customer support, mm-hmm. and then there's some exchanges where it's just complete shit. So let's let's wrap up. We have like five more minutes. And yeah. Let's wrap up with some actionable items. I want to get involved. I want to start doing something. So I'm I'm a I'm a off the street. I'm oh. walking to Bitcoin Center, you yeah. know, mm-hmm. or walking into anything, and I want to get involved in cryptocurrency. Okay. So what do I do? Okay. So uh, probably first step. Uh, make uh, make an account with any exchange that will accept uh, that will accept you based off of your uh, your citizenship and country of residence. Mm-hmm. So these days, uh, Kraken is, is a very mm-hmm. very popular one. Uh, Coinbase, uh, I think they only cater to U.S. citizens. And then, depending on where you live, there might be an exchange within your well, that's based within your country or based within your region. Sure. Um, if you live in Asia, you have a lot of options. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, uh, just like uh, do a quick uh, Google search, uh, mm-hmm. at, you know, try to find an exchange that will work with you. That's right. Uh, and then, uh, then you can deposit your fiat money straight from your bank account into your exchange account, mm-hmm. and then from there, that's when you can start buying and selling uh, Bitcoin or Ethereum or any other type of cryptocurrency, depending on if they have it on their exchange. That's right. And, and now, okay, so now I've done that. Okay. You know, I've done that. I've I've went there. I purchased the currency. Mm-hmm. Now my next question is, what do I do? Exactly. What do I do next? Yeah, it's like, right? All right, I got it now. <laughs> What's next? <laughs> <laughs> right. I'm uh, a Bitcoiner. Now yeah. what? Mm. So um, I'll talk a little bit about my, how like my path grew uh, mm. up till now, uh, which will also like include tips. So mm. basically, when I first got into Bitcoin, I was kind of at that stage as well. It's like mm. I bought my first uh, uh, part of Bitcoin. You don't have to mm. buy a whole Bitcoin, by the way. A lot of sure. people think that. Um, sure. But yeah, I bought maybe like $100 worth of Bitcoin. And then I realized, okay, well, now I need to learn how to like actually trade it. So mm. that's when you start going to things like um, uh, fundamental analysis and then mm. also technical analysis. So reading charts, um, mm. when you see like any type of uh, investor uh, have like all those like crazy charts, uh, sure. you know, like the candle S&P, charts, yeah, the candlestick yeah, charts, candlestick like charts, being right. able to learn how to read that, you know, how to uh, use all the different uh, technical uh, technical analysis tools in order to make uh, predictions, and then mm. also doing mm. your fundamental analysis, you know, mm. learning about the coin, the history of it, who created it, who what's the team right. of it, um, what's their progress, is it a scam, which mm. there have been lots of scams, what do other people say about it. Um, you go through that as well. And then also you have to uh, learn about your own uh, personal cybersecurity because uh, with Bitcoin, it, if you are uh, careless, you will get your Bitcoin s- stolen or sure. whatever cryptocurrency it is. Sure, sure. So you know, learning about um, you know, how to uh, maintain your uh, – how to maintain uh, proper security for your wallet and your computer and then also mm. – um, learning about just basically what uh, hackers are doing these days, um, and then 
from that, hopefully, you'll be able to choose very, very selectively the good coins and then also the scam coins. You know, yeah, filter out the scam coins. Sure, sure. Similar to a stock. Yeah, exactly. You know, if, if it's very, very similar. Yeah, you have, you have a stock and you have multiple companies. You mm. research about the company, mm. the industry they're in. The, mm. You look at the trend of the market that they're in and, mm-hmm. and you look at their their statements and you, and you make a decision. Yeah, right? yeah. And if you want to go one step further, mm. um, you could actually try learning the actual tech behind it. So That's learning right. about... Uh, for example, like blockchain development or mm. uh, just learning about uh, – yeah, hell, even just learning mm. uh, like a programming language, you mm. know, at least you'll have some type of foundation so you can move to the next level. That's right. That's mm-hmm. right. And all, all those points are very valid. And, and also I, I think it, it's important to mention about cryptocurrencies and – Right now, people think that it's a way to make money because people have made money. Yeah. Right? But I think we have to take into uh, – this might run a, a minute or two over. I think mm-hmm. that the, the problem – I got is, all the time in the yeah, world, that's man. that's great. Yeah. That's great. <laughs> so this is an interesting topic because now that you have the currency and people think of it as a store of value, mm-hmm. which is not. Mm-hmm. It's not a store of value. It's practically valueless. Mm-hmm. It's only as valuable as the people who use it. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. And so my question is where do you see – Bitcoin moving as far as a commodity and its its use. Mm-hmm. I mean, do you see yourself walking into a, a you know a Seven Eleven and buying a pack of smokes with Bitcoin? I mean, do you see I don't that? know about with Bitcoin, but mm. with a cryptocurrency, definitely. Mm. So mm. the problem about Bitcoin is that it's not it's um, the technology is a little bit limited, a little bit too limited in order to actually. Um, be able to use as a everyday uh, method of payment. Mm. So there are other currencies. There's actually a lot of currencies that are currently trying to figure out that problem. Mm. Um, one Ripple, of the big- maybe. Hmm? Ripple, is that kind of... I didn't mean to cut you off there. But oh, yeah, Ripple. Um, yeah, Ripple a little bit, although um, there's... Uh, there's been there's like lots of extreme wild mixed feelings about Ripple uh, all over I the see. world. Um, Bitcoin Cash, uh, okay. they're probably the top contender right now. Um, Bitcoin Cash is headed up by uh, Roger Ver, uh, who uh, is also known as the Bitcoin Jesus. Huh. Um, really? And uh, just using Bitcoin Cash, that it could po- definitely be um, uh, a I guess a replacement for Bitcoin in terms of the just the peer to peer payments, low transfer uh, fees, instant yeah. transfers, that sort of thing. Yeah, actually, I was um, I was doing uh, a bunch of Bitcoin Cash payments uh, with Roger Ver because he he had a conference here in Thailand. Oh. And I was able to talk with him, um, and then right. also. Uh, one of the things that he does is that at every single conference or meeting, he gives out some free Bitcoin cash just so mm-hmm. people can just, like, learn what it is, start using it. Yeah, of so, course. So he gave me – like, he was giving, like, a dollar each, like, a, a dollar USD of Bitcoin cash to every single person. And he asked me and another one of my coworkers to help him uh, to help him out, just, you know, sending it out. And uh-huh. that I hadn't done a lot of Bitcoin cash transactions before. Right. And then when I did that, when I started doing that, I was just like, wow, this is really fast, actually. Is it really? And the, the fees were really low too, so um, the, I can definitely see, understand why people think that could be a top contender. Interesting, because yeah. right right now, I think w- what came to mind originally is Litecoin. Mm-hmm. That mm-hmm. came up as because it, it's also very fast, and also the transfer yeah. rates are very really low. Yeah. But you think Bitcoin Cash is more of a contender for that sort of practical? I don't application. know about more of a contender, but uh, definitely the most, um, I guess, visible contender mm-hmm. right now. Um, mostly because of. Uh, Roger Ver. Roger Ver, he's uh, he's very, very, very good at mm-hmm. explaining and, promo- and promoting it to the public, especially to people who have no idea what Bitcoin Cash is or even what cryptocurrency in general are. Sure. I- I'd love to see that implemented in a real scale, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. And even I've, I've made some effort with uh, some of our – one of our uh, other – you know, John, one of our mm-hmm. other friends mm-hmm. – uh, and I made a relationship with him maybe three years ago, four years ago, mm-hmm. and we made some effort to go out to local businesses. Oh, really? And to promote, you know, the use of Bitcoin in their yeah. business. Yeah. So we got like one or two people. You know, we got some business cards. We had some communications with people. Where I work, uh, like uh, like in the, the local bars, like I go there all the time, and a lot of them know that I'm into cryptocurrency, mm. and then like they'll they always ask me like you know what's a good coin to buy because they are also now investing that's right in cryptocurrency as well so like it's spreading like crazy that's right people see the result yeah they directly see the result of it and they get a result and they want other people to get involved yeah i mean it, it's so simple and it, mm. it's so easy and it yeah. sounds complex if you're not used to it if you're mm. not in, you know aware mm. but once you dive into the 
well, you know, once you dip your foot in, you want to jump in the pool because it's yeah. so interesting and you it see is. your funds. It, it is yeah. like I will say, like it's definitely very, very easy to start out, and mm. and also. Uh, one of the greatest things that and I'll, I'll end it on this. Yeah. Uh, one of the greatest things that I think about cryptocurrency is mm-hmm. that with cryptocurrency, you're getting just simply everyday people to actually start investing and learning about mm. uh, how basically investing and economics works. Mm-hmm. Um, it's not just about, it's not just about the tech. Like for uh, the traditional investment side, normally you need like tons and tons of capital in or in order to. Um, like start doing it in order to see like any type of return. Mm-hmm. Uh, with crypto, it's great. You can start off with very very little, mm-hmm. and if you do your research, if you do your homework, um, mm-hmm. and you invest wisely and safely, um, and securely, mm-hmm. uh, you will you, like you can definitely make a very good profit off of it. And That's then, right. um, depending off of you know how far you're willing to go, you're learning about so many other. Uh, like side industries that sure. are connected to cryptocurrency. So right. I think it's really good that you know like kids as young as like college, like they might have have no interest of investing into like the Dow Jones or like um, like in Korea it's called the the Kospi, that's their mm. stock exchange. Mm. They might have uh, zero interest in doing that, but they're getting into crypto and they're learning about all these different techniques and like you know, just the fundamental traits that go into managing your money, mm. trying to grow your money through right. stock markets, through in, like through safe investments, things mm. like that. Sure, some people are going to lose money because some people are being careless. They just want like a quick bucks. You know, mm-hmm. they're thinking like, oh, you know, I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna join this thing and then I'm gonna five x my return. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, you could possibly do that, and then you'll probably lose all that money because it was probably a pyramid scheme. That's right. That's yeah. sure. And that they are uh, common. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that you mm-hmm. gotta be aware. I mean, I, I have a friend of mine who who. I have a friend of mine who lost maybe ten thousand U.S. dollars. Ten thousand. I think he actually lost. He was involved from a few years ago. He lost over a hundred thousand total. Mm-hmm. But on one pyramid, he mm-hmm. lost ten thousand. Yeah. Um, investors' money. He's still paying it back. So you oh, gotta be careful. investors' yeah, money. Oh, that's money. even worse. Man. He, I, I warned him from the beginning. I, from the beginning, I said, yeah. "Don't get involved in this yeah. situation because it has all of the indicators of a pyramid scheme." Yeah, and and if it's investors' money, know. ooh man, yeah. So I'm, he's, I'm he's, not. I wouldn't be surprised if he's going to be facing lawsuits later down the no, road. No, because it, it's like uh, his friends, you uh, know, it's okay. like friends and family uh, type thing, and yeah, some yeah. some. But anyway, but still, like, he's, he's working now to pay it back, yeah. and it's like you don't want to get yourself in that position. Yeah. So th- there's a few points. I mean, the the, the main the main thing is look at Airbnb. Right, number one real estate. No, it doesn't own any real estate. Yeah, you know, you uh-huh. look at Uber. Number one mm-hmm. project transportation doesn't own any any cars. Any cars, right? Yeah. You look at Bitcoin and blockchain technology. I would say moving close, if not the number one financial transaction mm-hmm. process going yeah. on. Yeah. And no actual money. Yeah. Doesn't and, own money. And, and 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 no one owns it too. And no one owns it. Yeah, Decentralized. Thing. Right. No yeah. one owns it. And you talk about the Satoshi thing, but anyway, mm. that's not really relevant at this yeah. point. Mm. But. That's the po- the thing is that you don't know what's going to happen. Yeah. And that's why I'm trying to get across to people is you don't have to worry about these day-to-day trades. Mm. You can make some money, make a few hundred dollars, fifty dollars, ten dollars, whatever, but you buy some now and you hold it 5 years, 10 mm. years. Well, I can't see you losing money. I will say that there uh, like there are both ends of the spectrum for that. So mm-hmm. like if you are a day trader, mm-hmm. um and you like are have been able to you know bring your technical analysis to like the next level to sure. like you know godlike level sure then yeah that's awesome man i mean it's pretty stressful because you know the market is 24 hours but if, right. you, if you got the stomach for it like you can make a really good money off of it but that's right um th- but then on the other side just mm. just holding on to certain select coins mm. that you've really 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 done your research on mm-hmm. and you um, and even better if you've actually gone to like maybe an event where the team is there and actually sure. talk to them. Meet them. Yeah, yeah, meeting them that makes a big difference as well. Mm. Um, then if you hold it and you're patient and you don't mm. you know you don't FOMO in or out, mm-hmm. like you can you'll probably make pretty good returns off of that. It's fascinating. It's yeah. Fascinating. So let's let's wrap up. Oh, there. and then oh, also yeah. one last thing I want to say is sure. that th- none of this should be construed as financial advice. Please do your own research. I am not oh, a financial that's, advisor. That's an obvious disclaimer yeah. there. You know, none of this is financial advice. Yeah. We could only talk about the personal experience that I've had and mm. people that I've known and their personal experience. Mm-hmm. And nothing that you hear today 
is mm-hmm. necessarily replicatable, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. You can't go out and, and take the same thing and get the same result guaranteed. Mm-hmm. What you can do is you can go out and you can gain knowledge from different sources and you can ask the right questions mm-hmm. and gain the right insight mm-hmm. and then take practical application steps and apply that knowledge that you learn. Yeah. And as you do it more and more, naturally you will grow and you'll be able to get a better result over time. Yeah. So you're looking at the condensed effort of uh, of, of many failed attempts. Yeah. Right. To yeah. get to this this result. So mm-hmm. I don't want people to be misconstrued. Oh, buy Bitcoin tomorrow. You'll be a millionaire. <laughs> you'll buy a Lam- You'll have a Lambo anywhere you want. Yeah. It doesn't, it's not the way it works. Yeah. But the opportunity is real. Yeah. And there are people doing it. Like I guess I'll leave it with this. Basically, when I was trying to learn how to play poker, mm-hmm. one of my friends who who had been playing hold'em for years and years, he said, "Okay, well, first step is that you're gonna have to learn how to lose money." Sure. And I was just thinking, "Yep, that sounds about right." That's I mean, right. That's, that's right. That's like that will be the easiest way to get the cold truth that mm-hmm. this this stuff can be dangerous, and mm-hmm. that you have to take the time and effort to do to to learn about it. Basically. Yeah, and you never invest uh, what you can't lose. Mm-hmm, exactly. You take that basic principle. Yeah, right? like you know yeah. those basic principles. I, mm. Like to be honest, the like, basic principles of just regular investing in mm. traditional stock markets, you can apply them to the cryptocurrency markets. So we'll finish. Last yeah. thing, uh, what coin? Right now, what's oh, the coin? On, what's man. the what's the coin? Yeah, what? yeah I give you one. <laughs> if you say right now, not <laughs> even just one that you're feeling, one, one that, that you I'm like, feeling. that you like, one that you like, you think, hey, I think oh, there's I some opportunity. That. You, you want to stick with Bitcoin Cash? Yeah. Do you want to go with yeah. some uh, Bitcoin? Yeah. Is there something? I'll say this. Uh, so I won't. Coin. I won't give you a specific coin, but I'll give you a category of coins. Okay. So I think uh, protocol coins, like the kind of like the next generation protocol coins. I think those could be very very interesting, especially mm. in the second half of this year. Okay. Um, and then further beyond that is kind of like the the so-called like maybe next generation cryptocurrencies that aren't exactly using blockchain technology, but like kind of the next level of blockchain technology. Sure. So sure. I think those are going to be very, very interesting because you have a bunch of coins from different industries, like, mm. you know, for you know the financial industry, for like the, the marijuana industry, pornography industry. And, but, and also Kodak. Yeah, Kodak coin. That I thought was really weird. That, it is weird, but I mean, hey, they're doing something. Yeah, and they yeah. actually, I think they made a lot of money off of it too. So I mean, just the yeah. name, the yeah. name. Is yeah, just, name. <laughs> you know. yeah, you could add anything and then just put ICO at the end of it. And yeah, then it was, gonna, yeah. They're gonna, people are gonna invest. Yeah, gonna, yeah. The the key, I think, is is getting back to the value of the technology. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And if if so, really, the coin, quote unquote, mm-hmm. is just a way to transfer uh, value from one person to another. Right, I, I have a hundred of this. I want whatever it is. I want to transfer a hundred of this to this person. Mm-hmm. Now they have a hundred of this. It, that is a very uh, like significant part of it. But then also thinking about maybe the the, the utility value of mm. the coin uh, or token, and then also the blockchain that is supporting that coin. So mm. um, I'll give you one example. Sure, voting. Um, mm. So in certain countries, they've been testing out using blockchain technology and. Your coin or token that you mm. own, Mm-mm-mm. you use it as kind of like your ticket to vote. Mm-hmm. So it, it, you know, it basically it secures all of the um, like the, the voting results through blockchain technology. That's right, and it, it upgrades these systems. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. the key. Is mm-hmm. it's a lot of technology. I guess I mean I have freedom to go into detail with this. Is like before this blockchain technology you had a computer and if one computer wanted to talk to another one there had to be kind of a third party intermediary mm. right or one in- thing had to talk to another thing and now you have this third party intermediary mm. being removed completely mm-hmm. and you have just these two things talking to each other directly yeah easiest example would be mm. just you know sending money from one country to another country that's right like that's you can't right. just do it yourself you gotta go through a bank you gotta go through western union that's right and then like they themselves also have, also have to go through like swift or something that's right but that's right with cryptocurrency he sends you uh like your the payment address you send it there bam you're done so your your cryptocurrency your blockchain technology would be equivalent to swift yes as far as the transfer technology yeah, mm-hmm. as far as the transfer technology, um, and then also that uh, there is no ownership of the Swift. That's that right. Basically, everyone owns the Swift. Just back to that janitor yeah. analogy that you made earlier mm-hmm. about the janitors kind of uphold the system mm-hmm. by processing these transactions, mm-hmm. and they keep this ledger, this mm-hmm. huge ledger of mm-hmm. all the of all the transactions that have been made, mm-hmm. which is the blockchain. Yeah, exactly. Right. 
So I think we covered a lot of things in a, in a short time. Yeah, really, we really we went, went. We went twice over the time. We that did. We yeah, say. yeah. We well, get into it, and <laughs> yeah. there's just so many practical applications. Mm -hmm. and, and I think, as far as like, if you're talking about developers, and mm -hmm. if you're talking about like um, the technology behind it, yeah, it's about wh where do I put this amazing new? I think it's almost like the internet. When yeah. the internet first came out, a lot of people are comparing to that. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's that's what it is. Yeah. And, and I think it also, it's interesting, I, I read one time, it might have been in the book, Outliers, or there's another one by the same author. Malcolm Gladwell? Yeah, Malcolm yeah. Gladwell. He, he, what's another, Outliers? Uh, he had Outliers, he had uh, Blink, I believe, Blink, or the Tipping Point? Tipping Point. Yeah. He's a okay. Tipping Point. He talks about fax machines. Oh, yeah. And he okay. says, the value, if you have one fax machine, mm -hmm. What's the value? You can't fax anything. <laughs> you can't. All right, I got it, man. Got it. Just got to wait for one more person. That's right. And so as so, blockchain technology is very similar, right? As you have more machines, as you have more uh, mining, miners, mm -hmm. the power of the infrastructure becomes valuable. That's true. But, I mean, as people have been finding out recently, that's also a double-edged sword because of the costs are, uh, are required uh. to uh, maintain that type of network. So, electricity. Yeah, the, specifically the electricity that is being used to power the miners. Um, I think I heard one crazy statistic. The entire amount of uh, electric, electrical power that's being used in Bitcoin mining mm. is like all of Iceland. I, I believe yeah. it. I believe it. Yeah. And, and there is – I mean, additionally, there are – tons of interesting just innovative and yeah. creative uses right mm -hmm. i mean you have stories from icos in the mountains of uzbekistan you know that one the mining <laughs> one it's like mm -hmm. this uh this mountain in this area it's it's just cold you know, it's just cold. Oh, so they put so, the yeah. mining software yeah. in there, and they don't have to cool it down at all. I think they do the same in, like, Scandinavia as well. It might be. It might yeah. be. And it was, mm -hmm. a, it was an ICO, right? It was, like, mm -hmm. mining ICO, mountain ICO or something. Oh, was it really? Know? Yeah. Like, oh, that was really cool. We mine our cryptocurrency <laughs> in the mountains, and it's a cool temperature, so our electrical <laughs> fee is free and all this, you know. Yeah. And they all have their point, and maybe they have some value, right? But we don't know. But it's yeah. creative. Yeah. And, and, the, it's creative. and yeah. going back to, like, that problem with the mining and electrical power, lots of people are trying to – uh, create solutions for that, either through sustainable mining. They're using the excess heat to actually um, – th I've heard of people using the excess heat from their mining machines to actually um, grow plants in greenhouses. That's right. I've heard, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. which I thought was really cool. And then now the technology that is powering that mining part of blockchain, uh, they're shifting to actually different types. So – uh, I won't get it. I'll just say it's proof mm. of work. I won't mm. get into the details of it right now. Mm. But now they're moving into other things like proof of stake, mm. uh, proof of burn, proof of I've heard of proof of participation. There's lots of delegated proof of stake. There's so many different types of proof uh, to power the blockchain. That's right. That's mm. right. So we don't know where this technology will be five years from now. Oh, right, no, ten years absolutely. from now. We have no idea. Yeah. Especially like you know people like you and me. Mm. Like we're, in this industry, mm. we'll be dinosaurs. Oh, like who you're, knows? You're, yeah, yeah. You're gonna completely. have kids like as young as 16 who are already like you know 16, 17. Of course. Yeah, they're already probably making six figures. Of course, but I, I think we have to have. I mean, there has to be some regulation. I mean, talking about yeah. losing investors' money, there was a 17 year old mm -hmm. who's I think not even legally allowed to trade who lost mm -hmm. like a hundred thousand of investors' money Ooh. in um in Russia. In uh, Russia, really? yeah, it was in Russia. It was a Oof. young kid. I would not want to be. I think Russia. I think he killed himself. Oh, did he really? He oh, him. wow. I read the article uh, two days ago, three days ago. Mm. Yeah, but it, it, things like that mm. can't have that. Mm. Gotta have some regulation. Yeah, yeah. As, at least age. At least age. Yeah. So like uh, Korea, like they're trying to fast track their regulation because mm. right now Korea has the second most volume, second most trading volume Is in it the though? world. Yeah. Compared to Japan or America? Japan's Japan's number one. The Japan's number Japan's one. Japan's number right, one. Right. Korea's second. America's third, actually. And Europe is Europe is total is or is it is it considered by country um, in Europe or is it just Europe? Because Europe is considerable. Yeah, Europe is pretty considerable. I don't know. Uh, like, I mean, I'm sure probably if you took the entire region, yeah. then that would probably that's that's probably going to be in the top three. Um, it's top. It's it, it's up there. I mean, anyway, yeah. it's America, Europe, Japan, Korea. No, no, no. it's uh like number one is Japan, mm. two Korea, mm -mm. three USA, mm -mm. and then. Four and below is the other countries, and got Europe it, is probably it. pretty high on that list. It's amazing, yeah. and, and and that only goes to show is, is Japan legalized. 
Mm-hmm. I mean, they legalized mm-hmm. it completely. I mean, yeah. it's, it's it's accepted as a currency, I believe. So yeah, that's um, that's a little bit up in the air actually right now Is because it? right now. Um, it's like the on the surface, it seems that Japan's some somewhat of a crypto haven. Mm. Um, that's not actually the case, especially recently. There's, uh, I think, there's like a lot of um, like confusion and then mm. also conflict about trying to uh, trying to formalize the regulation about it, mm. and then also, oh, really? and then it also it doesn't help that they've had prob- like the two biggest hacks of exchanges in on Bitflyer. Or what, 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 which it, what, the first one, the most famous one, was Mt. Gox. That was a Japanese exchange. Mm-hmm. It was a Japanese exchange who was – It was uh, the CEO was a like a, a French guy. Um, Interesting. And then there was uh, – more recently, I believe uh, – was it this year or last year? I think it was last year, late last year. Mm. It was, I believe, CoinCheck. And okay. the amount they lost was actually more than the Mt. Gox one, which was the first wow. one. Yeah. Um, wow. I think it was – um, I want it was at I want to say it was a, at least five hundred million. They say, wow, it's fascinating. They, they, U.S. They, yeah, yeah, yeah. They say that the Singapore I think is the most secure one. Singapore or mm. Israel, one of those has claimed to have the most security. So uh, security in terms of. I don't know, man. Cold uh, storage combined with all sorts of other techniques. I don't know. Uh, um, possibly. I'm not exactly sure, to be honest. Um, I did hear that there's a bunch of crypto billionaires who, mm. like, they, like, rented out, like, an old, like, like uh, Cold War bunker. And they, yeah. they, they have all their cold storage wallets in there. That's what has. Oh, yeah. God. <laughs> That's amazing. Hey, man, Jason, thanks for coming out, man. No problem, man. Thanks I for having really, me. I really, really appreciate it. Yeah. And, uh Let's wrap it up. Anything that you want to say to anyone before we uh, – any last comments? Uh, just want to say that if you are getting into cryptocurrency, um, do not expect to become an overnight millionaire and being being able to buy, like, you know, Lambos and, you know, bottles at the club. Okay? You have – if you're going to do that, then you're going to lose all your money, and then also it's just going to hurt the industry in general. Do your research. Uh, talk to people. Uh, be very very critical and then also one thing that my coworkers and I we like uh, it's kind of a little bit of a slogan is that we, um we say don't trust anyone which is kind of right. true because you are responsible with cryptocurrency you are responsible for all of your investments and uh, uh your uh what was it? basically your money that's basically. right that's right that's right you heard the man here guys yeah. digital nomads in paradise the uh first ever recorded podcast here in uh we're in the kingdom we're yeah, in thailand yeah. today in bangkok yeah. it's funny we didn't really talk about the nomad part that'll be that'll be next episode that'll be the next episode <laughs> yeah. yeah we'll talk about the lifestyle yeah. on the next episode yeah. and uh jason you're you're welcome to come back at any time i would love to anytime i love thailand yeah man yeah. anytime anytime mm-hmm. so let's wrap it up you heard the man guys thank you so much for listening and we'll catch you next time bye-bye bye